Hello and welcome to Loud Creations. Today I'm making a video about my journey attempting to make mead out of milk whey. Uh, what started this? Well, I, in all my research over the last couple of years making mead, I came across a thing called Blonde, B-L-A-A-N-D. I'm assuming, I looked up how to pronounce it, so Blonde, pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Um, and this is, this is wine or mead that's made out of milk whey. And, you know, it's been around for a really long time. I think the Scandinavians and up in Scotland and all over the, I'm, I'm sure they, those aren't the only areas where, where this was made because it's a way to preserve and use milk whey. So I thought it was really interesting and I looked it up on YouTube and I found, that's when I found the Happy Homestead channel, which I really enjoy. Um, so definitely check out their channel. Um, yeah, I like the wines and meads. He gets creative with, with the ingredients and stuff. Um, so it's a fun channel to look at if you're into making wine and mead. Uh, so enough of that. Anyway, I that is the only video I found on anybody making blonde. And this was quite a while ago. I don't know if it was last year or whenever I found the video. Um, and I also... Look at this battery. I also wanted to start making my own cheese. This is kind of over the last few years, I've just slowly been getting into being a little more self-sufficient and making a lot of my own foods and preserving food and blah, 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 blah. All that stuff. Home brewing is part of that. And um, I had not ever tried to make cheese. So I went ahead and I looked up how to make mozzarella cheese. And I'm going to Go ahead and let put in my process for making the the cheese and the the blonde mead. I'm just gonna tell you up front. Uh, I have a feeling the blonde mead did not turn out so well, and there's probably a couple of factors into uh, as to why that happened. But I'll get into that at the end, where I'll do a tasting of both. So because the blonde me didn't seem like it was going the right way. Uh, I And I also wanted to make more cheese. I made cheese a second time recently. Let's see what the date is on here. I didn't record it. I made a blonde wine. So I used sugar instead of honey just to see if that made a difference. And I made it about a month and a half ago. I just bottled it last week. So this is fairly young compared to the blonde mead, which I made about six months ago. Long story short, we're going to do a tasting at the end. And uh, so if you if you want to just see the tasting, you'll probably want to fast forward through my process of making the blonde mead. Although I think it's still useful because the cheese turned out OK. Um, it wasn't quite like mozzarella. It was more like ricotta. But I'm 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 still learning. Um, and. There is one element that I think really impacted how the meat turned out. And that is that when I was making the cheese, I realized I didn't have any lemons for the acid to get everything to curdle and all that. So I used white distilled vinegar and didn't really think about it until I started mixing the ingredients for the meat. And then I realized, oh, I'm mixing, I'm making a homebrew uh, with liquid that has white distilled vinegar in it. Whether or not that's what destroyed the taste, I'm going to guess that's what it was because I have not run into this. Um, again, I haven't tasted it for about three months, so it could have improved. I just let it sit for a really long time until I bottled it last week. So come along with me on my journey, trying out cheese making and making alcohol out of milk whey. Uh, so with all that, here is my process for making the blonde mead. I'm just going to put it in here and then at the end I will meet you again and I'll probably have my husband here and we will do a tasting of both the wine and the mead. Okay, so that is the way. I've already taken the curds out and here I'm adding my honey into the Instant Pot. Not sure why I chose to do it that way, but that's what I did. I think I added two pounds of honey. 
I don't recall. I should look this up. And I'm stirring it up really well, making sure the honey is fully mixed. And then I try to filter out as much of the remaining curds as possible into my pitcher. Stirred it up again. Then I took some out and I did the whole go firm thing. Set that aside. There we go. Half a teaspoon go firm. Boom. Let that sit for a little bit. And I took a gravity reading. And here I determined that the gravity was not quite where I wanted it to be. So I added more honey. Stirred it up real good until the honey was fully dissolved. And then I put it into my one gallon carboy. And still see there's a lot of cheese product in there Just floating down. All right, now's the time to add the Lalvine 71B to my go firms and make that yeast slurry. Um, I let that sit just for a minute and let the yeast wake up a little bit. As soon as the yeast woke up, I added them in, took a gravity reading, overfilled the carboy a little bit. Uh, and the gravity for this was 1.076. Yeah, I took some of the some of the liquid out just so it wouldn't overflow. Airlock, bung, we're ready to go. All right, I'm back. Uh, I didn't write down what I did for making blonde. I have to look at my my notes. Oh, it's not in here. Okay, so this is the blonde that I started, gosh, about three weeks ago. Um, there were some curds left in there. Uh, so I'm gonna be using a mesh bag to transfer this into a new carboy. I'm also going to be taking a gravity reading. So I think what I'll do is I will move this, get it off all the stuff on the bottom and get whatever's left of the curds out of there. And I'm gonna move it into a carboy and then I'm gonna take a gravity reading and I might taste it. This one makes me nervous. I can't, I'm not gonna lie. And the, the way I made the cheese, I didn't use lemons. I used um, distil <laughs> distilled white vinegar. So we'll see how this turned out. I decided to just keep going because I couldn't find anything about whether or not that would just absolutely destroy a blonde. Okay, so now that you know that, I'm gonna go ahead and move this into another container and I will be right back. Okay, so here it is. Well, it doesn't smell rotten, which is good. I'm gonna go ahead and take a gravity reading. Okay, so we're at 1.0, 1 1.014. Let's see what the ABV is so far. Okay, this is at about 8%, which is totally fine by me. I'm gonna uh, put it back in the closet for quite a while just to let it age. And I will check back in with it. I don't plan on back sweetening this. I don't know how it's gonna taste. I might take a sip out of the beaker right now. Okay, there's a there's a teeny tiny bit in here. I I I'm uh, okay. All right, here we go. Uh, I don't know why this is disturbing me. <laughs> I really wanted to try it. I well, what I really wanted to do is make cheese, uh, which turned out okay. Uh, but I got impatient and didn't, I, it didn't turn out perfect, but I made something out of it. So it all worked out. But this, this is like the byproduct and it make, makes me nervous. It tastes like milk. Okay, maybe it's because it hasn't gone dry. I'm hoping that maybe moving it into another carboy We'll wake up those yeasties and get them back to work. Because I was hoping to let this dry out. I thought it was supposed to be a little tangy. It's not tangy. Hopefully I don't get sick. I mean, it doesn't smell. It smells like young mead. 
Here it is. I'm putting this back in my closet. And next time you see me, I will be here tasting this. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. Thanks. Okay, so here we are. We are ready to taste the blonde, uh, the blonde mead and the blonde wine. And we're gonna see how they turned out and whether or not it was worth making. I have my partner here and he's gonna give his <laughs> reaction to it. Um, like I said earlier, I know that the blonde mead seemed like it was not going well. Uh, it actually sat for about six months and uh, the blonde wine that I made, I just made uh, a couple months ago and I just bottled it about a week ago. So I'm gonna, how do we wanna do this? Do you wanna try the mead for, let's, let's do the blonde wine since I have it in my hand. Um, the ABV, this, this ending gravity was 1.030, so it's super sweet. I put too much sugar in it. That's all right, we'll see how it turned out. It's about 16 to 17% ABV too. So I'm just gonna pour a tiny bit so that we don't have to drink a bunch. All right, there you go. Well, right off the bat, it's, you know, it's a little hazy. Uh, I had a harder time with the curds in this one. I didn't get all the curds out, so I had to rack it a couple times um, with a mesh bag to clear it out. Um, it's done fermenting. This is this is as dry as it's gonna be, and it's gonna be pretty sweet, I'd imagine. It definitely smells like wine. Yeah, it smells, woo, like, like it's alcoholic. I can mm. tell that it's 17%, 16%. Yeah just by smelling it. But it kind of has like a, I don't know, it's like, a, it's very sugary mm -hmm. or like a treat. It smells like a sweet treat. So I guess we'll just take a sip. Well, it's very sweet and it, you know, it's still fairly young. It has that, it's softer than I thought it would be. Yeah. I thought the alcohol content would would make it harsh. I think it tastes pretty good. I I probably wouldn't be able to drink very much of this. It's it's strong, yeah. Yeah. So uh, if I had to do it again, I would definitely put less sugar mm -hmm. <laughs> in there. But I was just guessing and didn't account for the sugar in the in the way that I used. Yeah, it has a wine smell, but not really a wine taste. Yeah, I don't know how to describe that taste. It's just sweet. It's like like it's honey, like, yeah, honey water. It know? is like honey water, but oddly enough, there is no honey in this. So, okay, well, I'm going to polish this off and then we can try the blonde mead. Would I make this again? If I make cheese, I might. I might, but I'll, like I said, I'd be putting less sugar in here. It's pretty good for having had dairy in it. That, that yeah, seems that, that weird to me. Yeah, that part kind of it, freaks me out a little bit. Yeah. Like, it weirds me out, but... It worked. It worked. And, you know, I assume that it, it maintained some of the nutritional value in it. I didn't look that up, but there must be a reason. I mean, it's preserving the way. Put it in your cereal. So, yes. Alcoholic <laughs> cereal. It doesn't really taste like milk, though. Yeah. It's kind of, I put a little lemon in there. I think there's there's a hint of, it's kind of tangy, but I think that's from the way. Like, that's mm -hmm. how it's going to go. But uh, That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Okay. That's what I'm here for, the bad jokes. <laughs> I appreciate the bad <laughs> jokes. Um, okay, so this this is the blonde that I made uh, six months ago. This is my first, ooh, why did I pour that much? I, I, I just, I already know, just smelling it. I don't know if it got um, oxygenation or oxidized or whatever you call it. Um, it's definitely more clear. It's, it's more not, clear. It's not murky and it's gold. Yeah, it has a golden color from the honey. Whew, it smells funky. It's a little, a little funky. It smells it's funky. like a rubber rubber shoe or something. Yeah. So my guess is that um, it got there's too much oxygen, or I I've not had that happen. I don't think with my meads where they they smell. I mean, maybe the banana you said tasted like a balloon. Yeah. 
<laughs> so maybe that first banana meat got oxygen oxidized. Is that is that what it's called? Sure. I should know the lingo by now, but this my brain lets go of things. It's a mead channel, don't... not a chemistry channel. Yeah, so. it's <laughs> it's a mead crafty crafty mead channel. I'm oh okay. So you ready? Yeah. Oh man! It tastes like cheesy vinegar. <laughs> it tastes like something I don't ever want to taste again. Where yeah, it tastes like. I don't know that we should be drinking this. Yeah, it's uh It has like an aftertaste of like parmesan. Yeah, if you like parmesan and vomit, this is the way to go. <laughs> so, this is a fail on my part and and I'm going to come clean. I might have already mentioned this earlier in the video, in which case I'm going to say it again. When I when I made the cheese, I didn't have any lemon, so I used distilled white vinegar. Uh and didn't think twice about it until I started making the mead. And I was like, oh, I'm thinking that white vinegar, distilled white vinegar, is probably not something that you want to put in your home brew. Yeah. And now I'm here to tell you, I mean, aside from maybe maybe I, I got too much oxygen in there somehow when I was racking it all those times. It could be that. But my guess is I used distilled white vinegar. To make the cheese, which then was in the way that I used, um, which destroyed the whole thing. And I'm not taking another sip. No, me neither. I'm going to have to pour all this out. That's that's some honey that I wasted, but it was worth a try. And have if I did it again, I might do this one more time and, and make the cheese with lemon. Just so uh, I can see if Oof. that's that's what caused it. You still drinking it? I'm you there's know, a there's a glass. Just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to be fair about it and maybe give it okay. Give it one more little taste and no, so, it didn't get any better. So what's your vote? I my, think it's my pretty vote obvious. Is, my vote is never make this again. Okay. And I never want to. I never want to taste that ever again. Okay. So for the win is blonde wine, blonde mead with distilled white vinegar. Don't do it. Yeah. I but like I said, the only reason why I'd make it again is to see if that's what made it yucky. Mm -hmm. I imagine it's it's, it's an undrinkable. You can't drink it. It's like the episode of Mr. Bean where he has people over for New Year's and he runs out of wine and he pours vinegar in their cups. That's yeah, it's on that level. Yeah, it's like drinking vinegar. It's vinegar, so yeah. it it must be. I just there's too much oxid, or it's the vinegar that I put in it. Oh no, it's it's. See now I'm gonna the, have to the, make the more whole, to figure this out. Yeah. I don't feel like I exposed it to a bunch of oxygen. I don't. I didn't do anything different than I have with my other meats. Um, so anyway, there it is. I hope this video is useful, and I'll see you next time. And maybe one of those times, I'll be trying this blonde mead again without white distilled vinegar. Wish me luck.